I am Shelly Hill. I am going to be what you would call a guide today or a coach today. The Filster Enigma is a revolutionary holster chassis system that completely divorces your holster and gun from your clothing, giving you unprecedented concealment whether in sweatpants or formal wear. It attaches to your AIWB holster via the wing and allows incredible flexibility for your concealed carry. Get yours at the link below. There are times that I am an instructor. Instructor means I'm telling you what to do. I want you to follow these exact directions. We are doing this in a very uh, methodical step-by-step -step thing, and that's what I expect of you, and that's what we're going to work towards a certain result. That's kind of what I consider an instructor. Maybe somebody else thinks of it differently. In this class, I'm more of a coach, more of a guide. I want to help you individually work through what we've got going on in scenarios or what we're working with tools. Don't forget, words are tools. Running is a tool, walking away is a tool, hands up is a tool, not just a tool, right? Phone is a tool. So we're going to work through that, but I don't have your experience. I don't know what you went through as a child. I don't know who you were married to at one point. I don't know if you just picked this up because you decided to do it, right, as a preventative. Everybody's different, so I can't instruct anyone to all feel the same way but what I can do is guide you through this going we're looking for one good first decision and believe it or not whatever you've been through in your past or whatever wonderful training and education you have we're going to probably come about to the same meeting in the middle it just may happen a little bit different way in your brain I respect that okay I believe that decisions are more important than techniques Hmm, what does that mean? Oh, climb into my web because you're going to learn what that means. And you may adopt that as well. Or you may go, eh, not for me. I'm not going to give you a definition. I'm just going to work through today and see at the end what you think. I believe decisions are more important than techniques. I am with the Complete Combatant. Some of you guys may have trained with my awesome husband. His name's Brian Hill. We have a training facility in Dahlonega, Georgia that does belong to us. We believe in being well-rounded. We believe in trying to recognize the first signs of danger at a distance, understanding pre-assault cues, understanding a facial expression, understanding body language, understand that we have to watch the hands first. But we can move all the way through less lethal, non-lethal, and lethal decisions into 911 calls, into, boy, talking to the police. What, what could be a better way than maybe we thought, right? Or it could be the exact same way, and now we just get to practice. What do we talk about to our attorney? What would be helpful or not helpful? That is not in the realm of this class, but that's what we believe is the more well-rounded. A lot of people out there are really good with her firearm, that's excellent. I am too. Be confident in who you are. Be confident in who you are. I am confident in who I am. I work very hard to have a consistent sub-second draw from concealment with my VP9 long slide, right? In my appendix, carry at seven yards to an accurate target on demand. I'm pretty confident about that. Right? That's great. That's great I work for that, and I work for that goal, because I made the decision that I wanted to be able to have that technique. Ooh, mic drop, there's the first one. Right? I think that's important, because if I need that, I better have it. I better be proficient and efficient with it. I better be confident, and I need to know what my capabilities are. That's awesome. But how many people here, show of hands, in a non-LEO uh, law enforcement or law military, how many people have had to shoot someone? Oh, come on, put your hands up. No one, right? That needs to be there when it's a must. You need to be proficient. But who here has had to tell a child or a stranger, nope, sorry, I can't. Nope, not today. Nope, not happening. Uh, nope, not interested, stay away. Who's had to use their words at one point or another to tell someone I'm not interested? Why don't we practice it? Right? So let's, let's try to practice that because it's all important in being well-rounded and understanding we have a lot of options. 
And it's great to be really good at one, but let's be good enough with the others. And that's what we're gonna talk about. I also do something that's called smart choices, smart kid choices. That's over here if you just wanted to look at it. Those are for children. These are flashcards, what we're gonna do today in adults. That over there is for children, and those are conversations, those images for parents, for uh, uh, in schools, it's in special needs, it's in counseling. Those cards help you work through and have conversations with some, some tough subjects and nothing more that it's a bunch of bees on a hive. We'll teach that four-year-old that's what it looks like. Let's stay away. And on the back of those cards, it just gives you some helpful hints. That's it, just helpful hints. But you're the parent, it's your teaching. Okay, and then we've got image-based decisional drills. That's today, okay? So, a little bit of history on this. Why did we do it? Well, to get away safely, right? Everyone, welcome to the world of dyslexia. I am dyslexic. I am not sort of dyslexic. I'm not the one that goes, oh really, do you, you say some things backwards sometimes? Oh my Lord, people. Dyslexia is a learning disorder that affects your ability to read, spell, write, and speak. Okay? Reading, I can't read. I have to read upside down. I start from the bottom and I work my way up. Okay? Image-based decisional drills, walk away, verbal commands, run, OC, shoot, failure to neutralize drills, two to the body, one to the head, call 911, tourniquet, flashlight. That's not memorized. I'm not capable of that type of memorization. I read upside down. That is dyslexia. Spell. <laughs> Anybody that follows any of us on social media, you'll see that half the time I have some, bad, some words out there that are just messed up. My favorite one is two years ago, I do something that's called the Mingle, which is a annual event for ladies in the firearms industry for continuing education to be able to pass some information on to others. That's what it is. What did I write? Annual event. Who signed up for the anal event in May? Sold out quick though. Oh, I gotta tell you what. I got uh, so many friends behind the thing going, Shelly, and I'm like, what? Oh, wow, so spelling, not my forte. Writing, I got lucky. I got lucky, I do write well. I write for Shooting Illustrated, and they seem to like what I do because I write like I speak, so people can kind of relate to it, right? I, you know, so I did lucky with that. Speaking, just so you know, I lose words, and it's not because I talk fast. Sometimes I say, well, your, your tongue or your mouth gets ahead of your brain, right? No, it's because it's gone. It flipped on me as I was talking. Who and why will come out backwards, and I spell them backwards. I'm telling you this because this is where this came from. It's important for you to know that I didn't have a stroke. I just went, what's that word, right? I don't use anything statistic-wise that has numbers because I'm going to be wrong, and I'm going to say it wrong. So I'll say most, some, sometimes, a lot, but I won't say 75% because I may say 57% and not know it. Every four and seven is backwards. Every four and seven is backwards, so I stay away from that. So if somebody says, well, what about percentage-wise, I'm going to say some because I can't do that because I know that's a downfall of mine and it will come out wrong. And then I've given you poor information, right? So just so you know. I am teaching you my way. Welcome to learning through images and hands-on or moving pictures, which would be video, right? That's me. Images are more powerful than words. Images are the most effective way to learn, store information in your long-term memory. This is not my opinion. There are so many people out there that are so darn smart. They've done all the work. They've done all their papers, their PhD, their masters of this, that, and the other. They've done the 50,000 videos plus. They put in all the work, and I've taken it and put it together. These are not my opinions. This does not hurt me if you ask me questions or challenge me. I got depth. I'm good, right? And my mind can be changed as well because I respect other people's opinions. But you must understand the information I am providing today when you learn through images is not my feels. It's because it's real, okay? We thought for the image-based decisional drills that there's a gap. There's something missing in the way that we, that we teach. We talk about the gun, we talk about other things, but what happens in between, right? How do we put it all together without having to come to a class? 
hence the image-based decisional drills. People carry a lot of tools. You know, you may have a friend out there that they are Batman, right? Right? And that's awesome. I have no problem with that. Why would we? But does the tool solve the problem? You solve the problem with whatever tools you've trained in and if the distance and time allows it. So you have to make the decision on what you want available so the techniques will be there. That's twice. That's why decisions are more important than the techniques because they're not going to be there. You've got to make a decision to bake a cake in order for that cake to be there. You've got to make a decision that I want a sub-second draw. Well, you can't do it unless you put the techniques to it. It's just a process, right? Mindset, avoidance, deselection, verbal commands are all used as a form of self-defense more than anything else. On top of anything is that. There are very few live or dry practice drills, games, so on and so forth, that work in non-lethal, less than lethal, or lethal options without going to a big facility or military or law enforcement. That's what this is for. So I want you guys to know, because of my dyslexia, I respect if you do not want to write and listen and see and do all at the same time. If you would like to take photos of the slides, fill in a few things later, please do. Because everybody learns. My husband will just write notes forever and he can soak it all in. Me? I'm like this. and I'm like, how do you even pick up a pen? I can't even put all that in my brain. So take your main learning style, whatever you know, your adults, how you work, how you listen, how you retain, and let's put some images with it. See if we don't do, do something a little different for you. So we're going to do two exercises. Okay, the first one is I want you guys to put in your brain dog, bike, and street. I don't care if you write it down, be repetitive, do word association, do whatever you want to do. Put it in your brain. Got it? Everyone kind of working through? Okay, Shelly's going to challenge me. I know she's going to challenge me. Write it down. Got it? What if I told you that there's a trick? that I could give you that you would store these three words in your long-term memory 10 minutes, months, years, till the end of time. You know how I'm going to do that? Writing it down won't do because it's gone. Repeating it 10 minutes maybe, three months, mm -mm. it's gone. Picture. A dog riding a bike down the street. That's in there now. That's in there now. Picture your dog, your cat, I don't care. Picture your dog riding a bike down the street. Right? Like she's, <laughs> she's like, Shelly, do you really have to do the dance? Hey, but it's memorable. No, it's a tiny dog. Oh, she's got a chihuahua. That's awesome. <laughs> A palm. I love palms. Right? So we've got an image in our brain right now of a dog riding a bike down the street. So if I called her in 10 years and say, hey, love, it's Shelly. She's like, Shelly who? I was like, you remember this, whatever? Do you remember what that image was? Because you giggled something awful because you have an image. And she goes, I imagined my dog riding a bike down the street. That's how images get in and burned into your brain. I want everyone, no one's touching you, so just so you know, don't, you're not going to be creepy, right? I want everyone to shut their eyes for me right now. Okay, good, shut your eyes for me. Got it, thanks guys. I want you to pull up your favorite photograph. Could be in your house, could be on your phone. Just something that when you see, it makes you happy, right? Could be of people, it doesn't matter. Now it's there. You've got that in your brain. You can see it. I want you to concentrate on their faces. You got them? I see, I see smiles. I, people, people are nodding at me right now and their eyes are closed. Think of their body language. What do you see? What colors are there, right? Think of the colors. 
Look past them and let's look at the background. What's in the background of that photo? Where was it taken? Was it in Puerto Rico? Was it in your backyard? Right? What time of year was it? Can you smell it? That's really cool, right? If you took the picture, you were there. Got it? Everyone got that beautiful image? Open your eyes for me. You have it? Awesome. Do you want us to imagine it as well? It would take you two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes to give me all of that information that you have in your brain right now to try to get me there. Everything I asked you right now, I'd have to pull up a chair, get a glass of wine, right? <laughs> and say, fill me in. Or I can show you my favorite picture of my husband and I's wedding and say that dog got off its leash and wrapped a 10 foot leash around my husband, my best man, George, all of them legs as we're getting married to say I do. We were like this trying not to fall as a person is running down the beach going, you know, whatever, scruffy, no, right? That is a true, that is my favorite picture. Look, we're cracking up. Most people are mad. Oh my God, it was a riot. We had a hundred of our favorite friends come down and spend two weeks with us in Puerto Rico. Why would that bother me, right? But I just spent two minutes telling you, and I didn't even get into anything, did I? I just went, check that out. See the dog? It was a day. The image is stronger than the word, okay? Students who tried to remember dog, bike, street, by any other type of thing, repeating, writing down, whatever, did very poorly on recall after a period of time. Once again, did I use numbers? No. In comparison to the students that made an effort to do that visual that we just did, significantly better recall. Did I use numbers? No, about 75% of the time. <laughs> okay, People retain more information when you show them that image than when you talk about an image. So we're going to learn that way. But it's, it's really good because I believe in the whys. I don't want you guys just to come up here and we just start doing stuff. Because you've got to understand the background of this and how effective it can be if we, once we get into it, right? So, based on research, the effective use of visuals can decrease learning time, well, that's a plus, can improve comprehension, well, that's a plus, I don't care how old you are, it can enhance retrieval, why do we not want that when we're in a learning situation? And it also increases retention. Well, I'd like to retain the information if I went to a class and it's on purpose. Why would I not, right? So people who have had this type of study done, they all say that through visuals and PowerPoint, as long as it's not death by PowerPoint, <laughs> oh God, right? <laughs> Wake me up type thing. I use colors, I use images, and I'm kind of a cartoon character myself, so hopefully I keep you engaged. Um, but they say that they could have accurately retrieved the information in a PowerPoint type thing just because it was active. 